Welcome to our Ask the Pastor series. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. And I know many of y'all are checking uh, out the Ask the Pastor series on YouTube or on our other uh, uh, streaming platforms. And uh, uh, you, you're not with us on the day it drops, which is uh, on Wednesdays at 6.30. Uh, but you come and, and look at it later. Uh, so uh, whenever you're watching this, thank you for being with us and hopefully this is beneficial to you. All right, uh, here's the question we're going to answer tonight. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15 uh, is the great white throne of judgment. And the question is, if our sins are forgiven, what does it mean that we'll give an account of what we have done? Will my sins be aired, my previous shame revisited? Will my sins be aired in heaven? And that is the question. I'm going to give you the answer, short version. Yes, your sins will be aired in heaven. But uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15 is the great white throne of judgment. And the way I interpret uh, the end times, uh, the great white throne of judgment is a different um, uh, moment uh, than... Uh, the judgment seat of Christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. Um, Revelation 20, verse 11 through 15. Let me read it and then we'll talk. Uh, then I saw a great white throne and Jesus who sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. The sea gave up the dead who, who were in it, and, the, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his work. Then death and Hades were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And verse 15, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is the great white throne. Uh, upon the defeat of Satan, if you just read through Revelation 20, upon the defeat of Satan, the final judgment comes. Uh, unbelievers are resurrected as Daniel chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 reports, and they will be cast into everlasting torment as described in Revelation 20 verse 15. Uh, it is the lake of fire that constitutes the second death, and all who rejected Christ will spend eternity in its torment. They will be judged by their works. You see that verse 13. They were judged each one according to his works. The dead were judged according to the works. Verse 12. By the things which were written in the books. Um, and, uh, and so uh, if you're not a follower of Jesus, if you've rejected Christ, then uh, your name is not written in the book of life. Um, uh, then uh, the other books... Um, as pictured here in metaphorical or uh, symbolic language or metaphor or uh, whatever, um, your deeds are written in the books. Uh, that's, that's what's written in the books. Um, it's different than the book of life. These are the books. Um, uh, well, those deeds, the bad ones, the sin, uh, is what is recorded and it's going to be rehearsed. And those who are not followers of Jesus will have their sins declared and they will be cast in a lake of, for, lake of fire. So that's the great white throne of judgment. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11, we have the judgment seat of Christ. I believe it's different. It doesn't have to be, but I believe it's different than the great white throne of judgment. Uh, you see, the great white throne of judgment describes, in my opinion, uh, those who are unbelievers being judged and cast into the lake of fire. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11 describes the judgment seat of Christ where judgment is on believers uh, like you and me, uh, and uh, we're not cast into the lake of fire. All right, so uh, what I wanted to do is kind of move from a Revelation 20 and move to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 through 11. Here's what Paul writes, 2 Corinthians 5, verses 9 through 11. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. 
For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I trust are well known in your consciences as well. All right, so we make it our aim to be well pleasing to the Lord. Why? Because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will receive uh, the things that we have done in the body, whether good uh, or bad. Uh, so uh, the question is, will my sins be aired in heaven? And I think the answer is yes. Whether good or bad, um, your sins will be revealed, though they will be revealed as pardoned sins. No more shame. They're covered by the blood of Christ. No more um, 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 sorrow over sin forgiven. They are covered by the blood of Christ. So what's the penalty at the great white throne of judgment? Well, there is no penalty, only loss, which seems like penalty, but it's not. Uh, see, we uh, who stand at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to give an answer to the things we've done in the body, whether they're good or bad. We all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, give an answer for the life that we've lived. Even as followers of Jesus, we will give an answer for the life that we've lived. You and I will give an answer, and that includes... Perhaps, it's, we don't know, but whether good or bad seems to me, uh, whether sin or not sin, but it could, not, it could be that when we get to heaven, uh, even if our sins are portrayed, they're portrayed as forgiven, they're pardoned, and maybe um, uh, scratched out of the book. I don't know. Uh, but we, the point of 2 Corinthians 5 uh, verse 10 is that we're going to receive, receive what? Receive reward for the things that we've done. Uh, heaven has rewards. Uh, we don't lose our salvation. We don't live in shame uh, or sorrow. That's done. That's, that's an earthly emotion. That's not the heavenly reality. The heavenly reality is joy and celebration. But uh, Scripture paints the picture of reward. And when we are judged at the judgment seat of Christ, we are all members of heaven and uh, sons and daughters of God, and we will celebrate the joys of heaven. Uh, but uh, we could have loss or less uh, because of the life that we've lived and, and uh, uh, not fulfilling the purpose that God has given us. Um, so simple, short answer uh, that I've extended far too much. According to 2 Corinthians 5, 9 through 11, yes, uh, our sin will be aired, pardoned sin, forgiven sin, shame no more, because we are no longer condemned. Uh, it doesn't mean that it, it's not revealed. Uh, so I don't know if that's megaphone or if that's just God and me, but whatever it is, um, uh, it will be revealed, the good and the bad. All right? Hope that helps. I uh, hope it encourages you. And, and, and really, the warning there is to encourage us to make it our aim to be well-pleasing to Him to whom we must give an account. All right? Um, uh, next week, um, uh, we're going to answer the question, does God change His mind? I hope you join us. Here's the benediction. Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior who alone is wise, uh, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. God bless y'all.